Today I'll be going over the renowned Sega Genesis title, Streets of Rage 2. It released back on December 20th, 1992 and is quite a critically acclaimed and beloved classic by millions of fans. This game falls in the beat-em-up genre and is also known as Bare Knuckle 2 in Japan. Being the sequel for the first entry released a year prior, the story continues with the heroes from the first entry rescuing one of their original comrades that is kidnapped by the syndicate they thought they had defeated. The game itself has seen a number of ports since its original release, with one of them being on Sega's last console, the Dreamcast. One odd one is a version on the Sega Master System, though this is pretty much the same as the Game Gear version. It seems to move a fair bit quicker, but overall looks and plays is what you'd expect for an 8-bit version of the game. Beyond this, it's been ported a number of times in various collections, and I made sure to snag the 3D version of it on the 3DS before Nintendo shut their eShop down. For me personally, I think I heard of this game mostly in passing from friends in person, YouTube personalities, and magazine article writers discussing Streets of Rage 2 as one of the greatest games of all time. As soon as I'd heard it was a Genesis game though, I immediately dismissed it. How could anything be so good but not on a Nintendo system? Well, oh, how wrong I was! Uh, before I dive too deeply on how wrong I was on this, let me compare this to what I do know. When I first got into this game, it immediately felt like a number of games I had already played on the Super Nintendo. It was like Final Fight, but less an arcade field and with more depth, Rival Turf without the repetition and perhaps maybe even a touch slower, and Super Double Dragon, but faster and smoother. The latter game, of course, is probably my second favorite beat-em-up on the SNES in all time, as that has fantastic gameplay itself and music. The more that I played Streets of Rage 2, the more I feel that it just simply blows Final Fight and Rival Turf out the water, and I think I like it as much as Super Double Dragon. All these games I mentioned, of course, are beat-em-ups. At first glance, this type of game looks like a violent button masher. However, really good games in this genre have nuance. This includes specific moves for both the main characters and enemies. It also includes management of enemy waves the player ensuring they are clearing out the enemies in an efficient manner, but also not getting overwhelmed and rushed. And this game nails all sorts of these levels of refinement. Now I've played the first entry in this series before, don't worry I'll eventually review that, but essentially this second entry takes what worked well in that and makes it so much the better. That includes feeling more fair overall, eliminating the one-off special move, much like Contra 3's A Button Bomb, and it just feels like the fun factor has been amped way the hell up. The controls themselves are simple. A deploys a special attack that's really strong but damages the player very slightly. B is the normal attack. And C jumps. But again, there's a lot of nuance. For example, there's a couple unique moves deployed by holding B and hitting C to attack behind, or hitting forward or back twice then hitting B for a blitz attack check out this guide here for the full list and you'll see that the simplicity of the controls belies a lot of depth. Leveraging all of this allows an easier time managing the waves of enemies and especially the bosses. Nothing helps more though than having an additional ally, especially one that knows what they're doing. I've been playing with my wife and she's been an invaluable asset helping me clear these waves. She's quite good, although we keep attacking one another on accident. I know some multiplayer beat-em-ups allow you to turn off team attack, but I don't believe I saw that option here in this game. One annoying aspect probably is when enemies start hiding off screen and there's no way to pursue them. Of course, this is something that many other beat-em-ups have, so it's nothing really that's out of the ordinary. I noticed the difficulty started to really ramp up around the fourth level, with waves of up to six enemies on the screen at one time each with their own techniques and higher amounts of life. Taking advantage of characters' special abilities is practically mandatory here, or else the lives and ultimately limited continues will be burned through quickly. I always felt that the Genesis color palette is somewhat muted compared to the bright and colorful SNES. This works greatly in Streets of Rage 2's favor due to the dark and nighttime environments and the general aesthetics for the game. 
The environments themselves are actually pretty varied, showing off some cool looking details. I especially liked the carnival look in the third stage. The sprites for both the heroes and enemies are quite detailed as well. Animations for these are done very well with special attention to detail. I would argue the sprite detail is probably the best I've seen in a beat em up really ever. While I think that Turtles in Time is the better game, the sprites there aren't very detailed simply because 80% of all the enemies are foot soldiers, whereas Streets of Rage 2 has a number of different varieties of enemies. And what can I say about the soundtrack? Mostly composed by Yuzo Koshiro, with a few other tracks by Motohiro Kabashima, this is probably the pinnacle of music for the Genesis. The only song I didn't really care for in the whole soundtrack was Too Deep, played in the fourth level. Everything else was fantastic, which pleasantly surprised me since I'm such a video game music snob. I genuinely believe the sound chip in the SNES is better than that of the Genesis, but Koshiro and Kawashima used what they had extremely well to make a pulse-pumping soundtrack. The sound effects for everything are fantastic and extremely satisfying too. Punching and kicking enemies provides gratifying crunches and pops that help the player feel the power of their moves. Getting hit by enemies provides the appropriate gravitas to the player as well. Hell, even the crates and other item boxes breaking sound great. And I'm honestly not sure why recovery items sound exactly like Pac-Man eating a piece of fruit. I tried looking into it online, but I didn't have any luck, so if you guys know why that is, let me know in the comments section. So as a Nintendo fanboy, what is my ultimate rating for this game? I'm giving Streets of Rage 2 10 out of 10 SNES controllers. Wanted to start out my list of games with a very strong entry to really make me feel my regret for not getting into the Sega Genesis library sooner. Streets of Rage 2 does not disappoint on this accord, with some of the best gameplay for beat em up and a fantastic soundtrack paired with expressive sprites and great looking environments, it's no wonder this is a cult classic. I'd probably tie this as my number 2 for all time favorite beat em ups. Number 5 is River City Ransom. Number four is Scott Pilgrim. Number two, of course, Streets of Rage 2, tied with Super Double Dragon. And number one is Turtles in Time. So what did you think of my review? Let me know in the comments section. Like and subscribe for more content, click that bell for notifications, and have yourselves a great day.